church to worship him but you know it should be a seven day a week deal it's not just saved for Sundays and Wednesdays it should be a daily affair you know how, how can you say that you love someone like Sister Crystal for instance if I, if I said I love Sister Crystal but I only loved her on Sundays and Wednesdays that's not going to work very well for Sister Crystal because she's not going to love me very well for that you know and so you have to look at that spiritually and look at it in the sense of how you love the Lord. Do you love him just on those two days a week or do you love him every day? Amen. Are we only going to do it for Sunday and Wednesday for the benefits of he's going to carry us for Monday, Tuesday, then we're going to come back Wednesday and get filled back up for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You know, I get a lot on Sundays. I get a lot on Wednesdays when I pray. Well, I get a lot anytime I pray, but... You know, what I get on Sundays don't last me till next Sunday. I'm telling you, I can come in here and get a belly full, but it don't last me till the next time I come. So I have to depend on the every day renewing and every day giving him and asking for that more and worshiping him. Well, one thing I know, 
There's some parts that says forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is. Right. So it is a commandment to be in the services. And then this togetherness, you hear other people's thoughts and testimonies, which helps you and strengthens you. Right. And you can worship God anywhere. You can be right by yourself and right. worship God. Yep. Because I do it all the time, but right. you need to do it collectively as well as individually. Correct. That, that's the way I see it. You should think about the word edify. Yeah. Right. The church edifies the church mm -hmm. through the gifts. <laughs> right. And that's what they're made for is the edification of the church. Right. So if you're not ever with them, what does edify mean? Right. To be built up, you know. Well, that's another thing. Gifts won't be in operation if you're not there, if you don't be obedient to what the Word says. Right. Even if you got the Holy Ghost, that don't assure you that the gifts are going to work. Because right. obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. No matter how much you sacrifice, if you're not obedient, you're not getting anywhere. I can turn the radio on and listen to music all day, but there's just something different about coming into the house and worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I can turn the music on at the house and you still get in the presence of the Lord, but it's different when you come into His house and you're solely focused on nothing but the Lord. Yes. You know, I turn the I turn YouTube on. And I, I like to listen to a lot of channels more. You know, a lot of music on TV and and on YouTube and stuff. You know, and you can focus and, and get in his presence, but it's just so much more around the house that you're surrounded that, you know, you're constantly walking and you think, oh, God, I need to do this and I need to do that. But when I come into the house, all of them distractions are gone. And it, it's so much different when you come in and you assemble with people that's here for the same purpose of what you're here for is to glorify the Lord. When you pray together in a collective manner, it seems like after the prayer, there's such a, a peace right. that flows through you. It's just right. unimaginable. And when, and when you think about worshiping the Lord, you know, there's much more to it than just coming here and singing. There's much more to it than being at the house and singing and, and praying, you know. There's a whole lot more to it, you know, when you when you solely humble yourself in front of him and you solely give everything that you got to him, you know, witnessing, going out and spreading his word, you know, building your other people up, building your brothers and sisters up, you know, that, that all comes back to that same thing. You know, you're still worshiping the Lord, you're still giving him, you know, reverence. <clears throat> I would say daily bread. So right. You gotta have that daily. And in John in twenty, uh, John four twenty three says, "But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth." Here it makes you alive. The labor will kill you by itself. Can we go back to that mark just for a minute? That verse 30. When you when you when you read that at 12 30. There's four parts to that commandment. Right. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm -hmm. Very important. So the commandment was to do those four things. Right. I think about the mind. The Bible says search out. You know, and you, you got to put some effort behind it. Right. Uh, a lot of times people say, well, if it's the Lord's will, 
but I think what the, the Lord said, search me, try me, mm -hmm. know me, know my way. Right. And I just, again, the heart and soul, he said, do this with all your heart, you ought to, lo you ought to love it. Right. And soul is eternity, you know, to, to make the place, you know. Again, the parable says when you find the pearl, go back to all you had and buy, buy the field that the pearl was found in, you know, and that's the importance. Right. To me, it's the, I don't know, sometimes it's like people can take it or leave it. Right. They come in here and get a little bit of, you know, chill bumps or whatever, and then when they, when they leave, they say, well, I got the chill bumps today. I didn't know. Uh, you know, and I'll get some next time, play some, you know. You know. The wind can go and get chill bumps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think more than just the chill bumps. Amen, Bobby. I will say this, and, and, um, and this has been on my mind for a little while. And, um, uh, it's carnal, but I want to put it on a spiritual level if I can. <clears throat> you know that old saying, you don't miss stuff until it's gone? Mm -hmm. You know, like that. And, uh, and I hate to say this, but I, I'll just be honest. Because <clears throat> again, I know it's going to sound good, but sometimes, you know, you get busy in life and... <clears throat> People want to visit you and you get aggravated because you did it. Right. Does that make sense? I know that sounds ugly, but it's the truth. I, it ain't that I didn't I don't like them, but you just so busy and it's like you get in your mind and say you you coming at the worst time. It ain't that you didn't want to visit. Right. Right? And y'all don't you know y'all don't know this, but it's all right. But my uncle Dave, when I first moved to where I live, man. He would come over and visit me. Very intelligent man. Engineer. Just and wanted to help me, you know, do things. And I, I let him help me. And I anyway, there was times that he had a picnic table under his pick uh pecan tree by his shop. And it's across the street there. And I I don't know for I don't know for four or five months, man, I visualized that pe that that picnic table because he and I would see it and he would tell me about stuff long ago. He mm -hmm. would tell me how he engineered when they were up there logging in Oregon, the state of Oregon and stuff, and how he would, anyway, just things that he'd done. And, uh, and he would sit there and he would just beg me, he would beg me to, for him to teach me how to weld and stuff. And I always thought <laughs> Uncle Dave would always be there. I mean, yeah. I always thought that. I mean, nothing against my Aunt Francis, but he could wash clothes, hung them out. I mean, he cut the grass. I mean, yeah. that man worked till he's 90, I mean, till he died that yes. night. You know, matter of fact, I was fixing to walk across the road, asking the Jennifer Warner to uh, a coconut cake, and then I was going to walk across the road that night to ask him to, to cook one. And when I uh, it was Jessica said, Daddy, they ambulance is across there. I was fixing to get up and uh, he had, died, had a heart attack. I never thought that man would die. I don't know why. And sometimes I, we, we cut Aunt Francis' yard. Sometimes I look at that, that pecan tree and say, I wish, I just wish you could get them conversations back. You wish you could get that back. And I'm going to tell y'all something. <clears throat> do with it what you want. I don't care what you do with it, but. This scripture right here, and Sister Crystal talked about it last Sunday about the books being opened and being mm -hmm. judged. Right. I mean, and Jesus even said, "Out of words will be judged," you know, yes. in, in the last day. And, uh, Brother Nathan, if we get to the point where we'd be persecuted, you know, and where it says in Matthew 24, then, then the great tribulation comes. If we if, if we live that long, we may or may not be here, we don't know. We're going to have wished that all these years that we've known him, that we've given him everything. Yeah. Right. Amen. There's more time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to 
I'm gonna tell y'all something about being ugly. I have been blessed to be around people that know stuff. Mm -hmm. And always, I hate to say it, pawn it off on them or learn to please them or whatever. But I take anything. I love them because they please understand. But to know how to weld and know the knowledge of if this makes any sense, y'all, he sit down and he had these pictures drawn. He was the only guy that was able to do this, and you'll understand this, Brother Nathan. That um, the Methodist Church has got all the glass in it. Mm -hmm. You know, there behind the top of them. Yeah. He worked for Scott still, but he was the only guy that was able to engineer the buckler to drive it. You know, that thing is built like this, and he had these pictures drawn. He hand draws all this. And he showed me how he took, um, uh, oh God, them ratchets and all. They he moved that that whole thing. He he unbolted each one of them without shearing all of that that uh, yeah. the glass that stained glass in front of that church. You know, and the Bible talks about how man's mind. Would be increased of knowledge and all, but to take all of that and the Lord sitting here with open arms, right. saying, I can give you all that you need if you would just come and sit with me. Right. But the first commandment is all your heart, right, and all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind. I want it all. And I will do you anyway. I'll just I miss that, and I, I, I get on my own self about that. How foolish that I just run 100 miles an hour all the time, and, and I take for granted things. Right. And I just wonder sometimes. Well, the, anyway. moral, the moral of that story is when the Lord's talking to you, don't don't rush that conversation. Let him talk and learn mm -hmm. from him. Talk to me. You know, get the wisdom <clears throat> out of it. Say that, you know, it, it, all of it, everything. You know, we can't expect to, you know, you can't expect when you go to work <clears throat> to go up there and sit for 12, 10, 8, whatever you work. You can't expect to go up there and sit and do nothing and get paid every week for it. Yeah. It's the same with the Lord. You can't expect to just come in here and sit down over there. Never participate, never clap your hands, never worship, never read your Bible, yeah. never spend time with the Lord for Him to give everything to you. <clears throat> it's all given to you. <coughs> There's so many promises that He promises to give us. <clears throat> I mean, He's going to fight for you. Your battles are His. He's going to give you strength, He'll give you wisdom, He'll supply all your needs, <clears throat> freedom. He give us a mansion to go and live with him daily. To go and be with him, like Brother Ken said, to go just sit and sup with him. He's given it to us, but we have to put in some kind of effort to receive it. He's not just going to give it to you and you never participate in nothing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you got to put in some kind of effort to be with him. You I know, mean, and just receive it. Right. I mean, that's an action word, receive. Right. You know what I mean? That's not just sitting back and somebody, you know. I mean, there's a difference even if somebody offers you a cup of water when you're thirsting to death. I mean, they can pour it out on you. You, you got wet. You got the water. Right. But that's not the same as you receiving it from them and drinking it and it doing you the good like it's supposed to do. Right. See, that's the difference. I mean, one, you just got all wet. The other one, you got quenched, your right. thirst got quenched, you know what I mean? So it's right. how you receive it.
And Sunday mornings and Wednesdays only has a potential is a potential time of worship. Mm -hmm. But every day is a day of worship. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, and I sit back and you know, I've had every other Sunday, you know, to to come up here and teach and it's hard for me to come up here and teach. You know, when you when you come up here and you're young and you know, you have to teach to your elders and people who've been doing it for a lot longer than you have and you know, it's hard for me, but you know, and then it always, it's never what you want to teach. It's always something that the Lord's going to put on you to teach. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you that the Lord has whipped me every Sunday. And, and you stop and you sit back and you think, Lord, what am I missing? There's something there that I'm missing. <clears throat> and you know, and, and then I read these scriptures and, and what I've written and what I've studied on and you say, Lord, I, I try my best to do what you want me to do. But what am I missing? There's something that I'm missing in my life. <clears throat> and it's hard to get up here and teach on that when, when you think, Lord, you want me to talk about worship. You want me to talk about being humble and living for you daily. You want me to teach on this, but you're whipping me with it. So what am I missing that you want me to get up there and teach on, on what I'm missing in my life? How am I going to minister and teach on something that I'm missing? It's, it's hard. This is hard. We're all struggling with the same <clears throat> stuff in one way or another, you know? You know, and you, can, and you come up here <clears throat> and my chest won't beat out, of, beat out of my, my heart won't beat out of my chest and got butterflies because you you don't want to be, <clears throat> I don't want the Lord to strike me dead when I come up here because it's supposed to be sacred when you, when we come up here, you know, but, <clears throat> so, so, so you, for me it's hard. <clears throat> we seem to be doing all right. It's always good that and good, good food. Don't be weary and well doing. I understand that too. It's hard. I know it is hard to, to get stuff to get people's attention. Well, it is, but for me, I hold I hold the word so sacred, <coughs> and I believe it so wholeheartedly that when the Lord gives you a, gives me a subject that I want you to teach on. You know, Lord, you want me to go up there and teach on something that you're going to whip me with. Mm -hmm. So what am I missing that you want me to teach on? And so I spend more time trying to figure out on the lesson that what am I doing than what I should be spending on teaching. You know? I don't know if, he's, if it's getting whipped with it necessarily, but it's the Bible says study to show that's not right. free, the work in it needs not to be ashamed. Right. So I think when you go in there and you start studying, maybe something that you find out or learn convicts you. Right. That's just you getting better. Right. That's just the Lord not Love only you. giving us instruction, but giving you instruction too. So, Correct. You know, I don't. I think that's the whole idea of it. Right. But when I say whipped, I mean because when I read it and I study it, and I end up beating myself with it because you tell me you should have been. This is what you ain't doing, or this is what you need to be doing, or, or when you get up in the morning and you're driving down that highway, you should be doing this instead of doing this, or listening to this, or, you know, it's when you have them few minutes at work and you sit down instead of pulling out your phone and scrolling football or seeing what the week's sports scores was, you know, you could pull out and read a Bible app or something like that, you know, and I find myself when I say whipped. I find myself under being convicted of the things I should be doing that I ain't doing. Sounds like the Lord's trying to help you grow. So you are learning as well as you are teaching us. Right. Oh, I, I understand. I agree 100%. <clears throat> I 
And I think that's the whole purpose, isn't it, of reading the Bible and studying the Bible and learning his word is to learn, right. you know, and he points out to us the different things that we're not doing that we should be doing. Right. That's growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Right. It's 